due to an emergency meeting, our Pro Vice Chancellor won't be able to attend the program right now, so we'll, we will be starting a program. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, I welcome you all to the Dean's Seminar Hall, Mizoram University. A warm welcome to the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dibakar Chandra Deka, Mizoram University. Pro, uh, Dean, of Semis Pro, Dean of Semis, Professor Bartendu Singh, Head of the Department of Library and Information Science, Professor Manoj Kumar Verma, Head of the Department of Mass Communication, Professor Irene Narwatkimi, and our resource person, Dr. Vinit Kumar, from the Baba Saheb Bimrao and Bedkar University, Lucknow. Distinguished guests, faculty members, and all attendees, I am Zodin Sang Itong Tu, a third semester student from the Department of Mass Communication. And it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the in-house workshop on digital media text analysis, which is jointly organized by the Department of Library and Information Science and the Department of Mass Communication, which in co 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 <clears throat> excuse me, collaboration with the DST Technology Enabling Center at Mizoram University. I would, like, I would now like to request Professor uh, Manoj Kumar Verma to present a bouquet and Mizo traditional shawl to the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Diba Karchandra Deka. Okay, I would like now kindly like to request Professor Irene Larwat Kimi to present a bouquet and Mizo traditional shawl to our guest, Professor Bartendu Singh, Dean of Semis. Uh, Ma'am, if you could please remain standing. Now, saving the best for last, as I must say, I request Professor, Do Professor Irene Larwat Kimi to honor our resource person, Dr. Vinit Kumar from Baba Saheb Bimrao and Bedka University, Lucknow. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Moving on, may I now invite Dr. Manoj Kumar Verma, Head of Department of Library and Information Science, to deliver the welcome speech. The Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Divakar Chandika, the Dean Semis, Professor Bhaktendu Singh, Dr. Vinit Kumar, Resource Person, Professor Irene, Head Department of Mass Communication, Professor Jyoti Kumar, senior professor in the Mizoram University, invited guest, faculty member of Department of Mass Communication and Library and Information Science, dear participant. A very good, warm, uh, very warm good morning to all of you. I firmly welcome you all in the inaugural function of two-day workshop on digital media text analysis, jointly organized by Department of Library and Information Science and mass communication in collaboration and sponsored by DST Enabling Center, Mizoram University. All, all we are living in the digital age where our life are surrounded by different equipment and we are using these devices and equipment to write and communicate. In earlier time, we are using the printed mode of writing and communication in both the library and information science professional and mass communication professional use this analysis, this write-up and communication by a technique called content analysis. Content analysis is a very old concept in our subject and mass communication, sir. Whatever the books or thesis was written, we have analyzed their content and making the abstract. What actually in that content, what information was uh, uh, given. But at the present knowledge society, the mode was totally changed from print to digital, the mode of analysis was also 
need to change from the uh, content analysis to the text analysis some anonymous word like data mining big data analysis data carpentry has been used for these techniques as these content are huge and available in different digital platform like website social media platform and need a certain procedure and method to extract this data from the digital platform cleaning the data for the analysis and in this process we need to know and understand some specific tools and software some copyright and ethical issues are also concerns such type of the data because in digital so many informations nowadays in social media facebook and twitter it is available in different academic sites are there so for the analysis of such data we have to extract the data and for extract we cannot extract directly we need some technology tools some software and many time in such type of the data we it took a lot of process for the cleaning of the data so therefore it is very essence very much essential for the library and media professional to be aware with such methods tools software and concern copyright and ethical issue therefore we plan this two day workshop on digital uh, media text analysis so uh, this is brief about the workshop now again i welcome you all in this uh, inaugural function of two days workshop thank you thank you Thank you, sir. I would now like to invite Professor Bartendu Singh, Dean of SEMIS, to share a few words. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you from the School of Economics, Management, and Information Science. Uh, I will just tell a few words, as she told. Uh, I would like to take opportunity to welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, in Dean Office for this program. Uh, if I am not wrong, this is first program when he is here in this premises. We have already held many programs, but at different places. Sometime in management department, sometime in tourism department, sometime in education, guest house. But I think this is first program from our school where our vice chancellor sir is here in this uh, premises. So welcome to our office, sir. Uh, I would like to. Welcome Dr. Vinay ji. He is coming all the way from Lucknow, Baba Sahab Ambedkar University, Lucknow. Uh, this is his second visit to Mizoram. Uh, first time, whenever anyone is coming to a place, first time, it is his curiosity to know the place. But if someone is coming second time, it means he likes the place. So I am reading the text that he liked the place. And he is visiting us. So thank you, sir. And I hope you will keep on visiting us. And uh, the topic he is going to deliberate for next two days are very, very pertinent, very, very important. As uh, Professor Mano just highlighted, uh, how to read the things given in different texts. Now it is uh, digital media. How to analyze those things which are given there. Just reading it and analyzing it. Reading between the lines, reading the lines, reading between the lines, and reading beyond the lines. We have to do these three things together. So how to do? I hope this uh, workshop is going to highlight on those things. Uh, I would like to welcome all faculty members who are here from different departments, uh, from management department, from commerce department, from mass, uh, mass com is the organizer, so they are here. Tourism department, I would like to welcome Professor Jyoti Kumar ji. He is senior professor in our school and uh, he is member of commerce department for sparing his time for this inaugural program. Uh, welcome to all HODs, welcome to other faculty members, welcome to all research scholars from the School of Economics, Management and Information Science, especially Library Science and Mass Communication. Uh, I would like to just tell one more thing to our Vice Chancellor sir. Sir, um, this year we started uh, for our PhD coursework, there is a paper on research and publication ethics. And this time we decided that we will hold a joint class, common class for whole of school, school level. So we have started this course and uh, we are running this in Dean office. And all students are coming on Friday and um, different teachers from different departments will be coming and uh, interacting with them. So 
this we are starting as a trial basis if it is successful next year it will be maybe some more things we'll try like this so uh, um, i will say thanks to professor irene also for inviting me for this program professor verma for uh, organizing this program and all the people sitting outside who are not visible but behind the curtain they are the real person who are working to her for attend uh, shooting it one day event will remain lifelong memorable because of her only because of her recording so thanks to her also and thanks to all who have given any kind of support for successful organization of this and with this i will say i will say best wishes to the organizers for success of this program and thank you thank you thank you sir let us now welcome senior professor joyti kumar to share his thoughts on the program honorable vice chancellor sir and um, esteemed resource person who came from baba saheb bhimrao ambedkar university i'm dr vinith kumar and um, um dean of our school professor bartendu singh heads of the departments um faculty members and uh, um very dear uh, um research scholars from these uh, two departments and um, i became unexpected <laughs> special guest here anyway thank you for the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity um, just i was thinking about uh, the theme of uh, um, this workshop um, they call it uh, in house workshop i don't know the basic difference between workshop and uh, in house workshop um, anyway i need to know about it and uh, Uh, actually uh, managing digital resources has become a big challenge for all academicians for all the uh, researchers irrespective of uh, the disciplines um, to which we belong and uh, covid 19 uh, affected our uh, reading habits very much and not only um, in our education system even in school system students uh, were forced to depend on their gadgets for their teaching learning process of course we could manage it very well without losing in academic year those 3 years covid has gone but still uh, i mean uh, the habits which we acquired during covid time um we are continuing uh, those habits some of those habits may be very good but some of those habits may not be very good now under nep we have introduced for example Mizoram University is one of pioneering pioneering universities which adopted the NEP 2020 uh, in the country. Um, earlier than many well-known uh, universities uh, um, that are located in big uh, cities also. That's fine. But now, whether it is a political science uh, student or uh, biological student or commerce student or student from literature, right? Um, we made uh, 18 credit uh, dissertation uh, a mandatory. covering the uh, third and the fourth semesters and uh, and we redu we reduced the uh, uh, theoretical uh, portion um, uh, very much right so now the challenge is uh, because just i want to take uh, i want to make use of this platform just to share uh, uh, our feelings uh, for our honorable vice chancellor so so far um, we um, we, uh, uh, we were habituated to engage our students within the four walls of a classroom teacher used to go there and uh, students used to listen that is what uh, we practiced all these days now it is a big challenge for uh, for us as a, as faculty members to engage our students beyond the classroom because uh, um out of five days one day they are really sparing uh, for their field work it may be field work it may be internship it may be apprenticeship whatever it may be right so they are going out because they are, the the objective is to make them um, expose to the, the the practical world right and of course what is industry for a political science department it is different for a commerce uh, um, department it is different for a life sciences department what is industry that is a different right that is one thing and another thing is uh, making a critical reading skills critical thinking skills and uh, research bent of mind we need to develop not for our uh, phd scholars we used to think that is uh, i mean they are meant for research earlier but now you know 
um, that type of uh, internship uh, and field work we enhanced that component we enhanced even for UG students even even for UG students and we all know in colleges uh, the, the the strength of students uh, is more and we all know faculty strength is not increasing to that extent so it's a big challenge and and we all know in college uh, system in most of the states including Mizoram uh, number of guest faculty it is increasing very much and regular faculty member it is declining so and we get uh, students and we introduced the four year uh, uh, degree program even for bcom and we have to see how many colleges are going to adopt four year degree program and once they are um, once they introduced uh, four year uh, say for example bcom research right and uh, become those who complete bcom research they are eligible to do phd bypassing mcom i mean that we i mean we try to execute uh, this uh, i mean the spirit that is the spirit behind the nep 2020 so now the big challenge for all faculty members is how to develop this critical um, you know uh, thinking skills critical research skills um, among the students including um, um, our undergraduate students and uh, during covid what we acquired is you know if you want any information everything is there in google and google has become a global guru so it is not only MCOM student or PhD scholar or a, a student studying class 10, right? I, I know they too have some projects. They have to do some projects at their level. So simple thing what they are doing is, and, and we are not giving, I feel we are not giving proper training for our students about how to utilize digital resources that are available responsibly. We feel everything is available in Google and uh, they need not depend on classroom, they need not depend on a teacher because, I mean, within brackets I am quoting, teachers are also very much dependent on what is available in the Google. So in some interviews in selection board, if I ask some questions like, you know, what is the latest textbook uh, um, have you referred in the field of entrepreneurship, even candidates they are struggling to answer a particular, particular question, that, that is a very simple question, right? And we are expected uh, to know the latest textbooks that are available in any field. And they find it very difficult to mention the author's name and publisher's name, saying, sir, we well, depend on internet, you know, like that. So I think from that angle, from that angle, this type of workshops uh, are helpful, not only um, for the scholars of these two disciplines. And we faculty members, right, we need to, um, uh, I mean, uh, we need to um, develop uh, a special skill uh, and a special orientation among our students, whether, whether it is UG or PG or research students, about how to utilize uh, um, um, uh, these um, uh, digital resources responsibly. I came to know that in some private colleges, uh, not, I mean, um, not colleges, uh, especially higher secondary schools, and we call it intermediate in uh, some places, right? There, private colleges, they have totally banned um, use of even a smartphone. And they are, because they feel they are heavily, in the, I mean, that is the age uh, it is possible to misuse. And uh, many parents, and uh, they prefer such type of schools because otherwise they can't control the, 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 the bad habits of uh, uh, their children. Now, in many schools, I know, they, I, I, I don't want to mention the names. There are, there are schools in Bangalore, there are schools in Hyderabad. A big problem they are getting is, parents is getting is, because, you know, they, the children, they became so addicted uh, to their uh, smartphones and they find it very difficult to um, I mean to lead uh, their uh, I mean uh, their campus life without uh, um, a smartphone is it desirable totally banning smartphone we can use it for a better learning teaching process so these are some of the issues we need to address as uh, faculty members uh, in higher education and uh, from the tangle I see this is very relevant workshop thank you very much Thank you, sir, for giving us a wonderful speech on such a short notice. Finally, may I invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dibakar Chandra Deka, to give his speech. Yes, I So now, may I invite our resource person, Dr. Vinit Kumar. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, the University, Professor Dipakar Chandekaji, the 
dean of the school but professor bhartendu singh ji head of the department uh, dlis professor manoj kumar verma and the mass communication department head professor irene and uh, professor jyoti kumar senior professor uh, thank you and uh, so uh, bhartendu sir mentioned like uh, if a person comes twice at a place it means he likes it yes yeah, certainly it is a pleasure to visit mizoram because uh, see the people living in plains the hills are for them it is a place that uh, attracts them for people living in hills for them they because they face the problems of hills they think that uh, it is a difficult life there but for a small duration okay it's fine so i am uh, i think it is my third visit to mizoram this university i came uh, first time in 2016 for a workshop a workshop as a resource person and uh, 22 professor Ar ratnamala called me for the similar kind of workshop and the students were benefited from it and then she said that why don't you come again in 2024 so in the may we had planned this workshop but uh, somehow my uh, health was not good so i could not attend at that time so it is nice and pleasant weather here yesterday when i came it was raining heavily i thought that maybe my flight will be cancelled in guwahati i was sitting there waiting for the flight so somehow i reached here uh, till 6:30 and it's a nice feeling to be present among the uh, the academicians of mizoram university coming to the topic of this uh, particular workshop that we have designed with the uh, with uh, the organizers here Uh, basically we are trying to address here the the tool uh, the techniques of uh, that are present uh, that is called text mining or text analysis so this tool basically is helpful in getting valuable insights right. from textual data so the the problem is that uh, uh, from numerical data we have very good tools available to for crunching numerical data for example excel powerpoint and spss and other tools are available which can crunch this uh, numerical data means the data that is uh, represented in the form of numbers but but when it comes to textual data it is difficult we need lot of uh, it was difficult and people tried it with the help of content analysis as mentioned by professor verma but it was time taking for example uh, in research what we try to do we try to generalize the things by studying a small sample we try to generalize the findings to a larger area larger, larger population so think of a situation for example say in the covid people were uh, given vaccination immunization program was going on and there was people there were people in the society who were hesitant to it means they were feeling that whether we should take the vaccine or not so if we go by traditional method of collecting data through using questionnaire we would be able to cover only a limited people but if i want to see what is the opinion of the society regarding this particular phenomena what is whether they are hesitant to the immunization related to covid or not so i can tap over the social media because people express their opinions on social media like platforms like youtube facebook and a lot of other platforms are available as mentioned by other speakers also so if i tap that particular uh, platform and find out some text that represent the opinion of the public in general and then perform some analysis textual analysis i will get some valuable insights i can find out whether the public is pro to the vaccine or whether they are anti to the vaccine or if they are pro if they are anti what are the probable reasons they are anti to the vaccination what are the probable reasons that are factors that are causing the hesitancy among the public and as a government as a as a academician we can recommend to the government that these are the factors which if you handle if you make the people confident about it they will be able to take the vaccine so this is just one example another example we can take it like say i want to study uh, in the last 2 years what is the public opinion regarding a particular political phenomena say one nation one election these days a lot of debate is going on i want to study what is the opinion of the public what are the sentiments public have expressed over the social media regarding this so in that we have to follow two two procedures one we have to collect the textual data and then second we have to perform some analysis so in this two days uh, workshop we have planned something like the first step we have dedicated to extracting the data how we can collect textual data 
so that we can perform some analysis. So in this, we will deal about the different ways we can collect the data. What are the different tools that are available on? And also I have covered some three tools also, which are helpful in collecting such kind of data. And then on the second day, we will try to cover what kind of text mining techniques analysis that we can do. These are developed with the help of linguistics people, with the help of computer science people, artificial intelligence people, and with the help of uh, data science people, a lot of tools are available these days. So how we can explore, exploit these tools to perform the analysis. Once we are able to collect the data and then perform the analysis, certainly we will get valuable insights. So the scope of this workshop basically will be to make the participants aware about different tools. We cannot expect them to uh, master over on these tools on just in one day. But the, the aim is to make them at least comfortable with the tools so that in the later part of their academic journey, maybe some research scholars are there. Even I was happy to find out that Professor Ratmala told me that after my uh, previous workshop, uh, she will she was able to publish some two papers uh, in, on scope in scopus index journal so that was one of the achievement i consider myself also because I, even i have not done anything in that the papers were written by her scholars but it is a it is an achievement for a teacher also when the students success when somebody applies whatever the knowledge is shared so thank you uh, the organizers for calling me here and it's a great pleasure to be in mizoram university and isol also and uh, the thanks to the Professor Weish, uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of MZ University for providing uh, infrastructure and support for my pleasant stay here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with your wonderful speech. Finally, may I now invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dibakar Chandra Deka, to give his speech. Namaskar to all of you. Our honorable guest, uh, Dr. Binet Kumarji, and all my colleagues on dais, touching from Irene to ending with Varma, and then my colleagues in the audience and their students. Uh, let me first thank the organizers uh, for inviting me. Uh, this kind of domains are new for me, so I have come here to learn only from you. Uh, probably there will be no problem with you if I share my views, a uh, few things, and you will be finding, uh, if I make wrong mistake, then maybe you will find it funny, okay? Uh, so you can enjoy it. Even I make correct statement, it will be good for you. If I make wrong statement, it will be fun for you. So both ways, uh, you make, uh, take it positive sense. Okay, so this domain I am entering now to give my uh, feelings or comments uh, in that sense only, take it positive way. A uh, glass, if I say this, uh, this glass is almost full, but not full. Uh, some people will say that glass is empty, not yet to be full. Okay, not completely full, yet to be full, empty. If it is half filled, it is the empty. And some people will make the statement half filled. So which is one statement is negative, another statement is positive. Same volume of water in the glass, one will see it empty. That is negative attitude. Okay, and somebody will say, no, it is not empty, it is half filled. That is the positive sense, okay? So I think uh, this, uh, this uh, topic of this uh, workshop, digital uh, media that takes analysis, very important and uh, we can learn many things from that discussion, particularly I can learn but I won't be able to give time that much but few things I have learned from the statement by uh, our colleagues, professors and let me t uh, share my views, okay, how I take it like that, uh, way I take the digital media and text analysis. And when we were in school, there was a uh, topic very frequently was given to us for debating. Say like small topics like in school, a knife, whether it is a curse or a blessing. Okay, 
So small topics like this. We have a kitchen knife, we have a domestic some uh, that uh, sword or knife, etc. all of us having. Now whether it is a blessing or curse for the society. That was a small debate. In school we were given like that. You can take both way. Okay, it can be used to kill somebody or it can be used to cut vegetables, meat, fish, etc. And after long debate, I think, it is well accepted now. And if we, I use that to kill somebody, that is a bad. Uh, that is a lack of awareness or ignorance or criminal activity, whatever may be. It can be misused. And, but we need it, well accepted. And society expect that knife should be used for positive purposes, not for negative purposes. Alfred Nobel, when uh, he discovered dynamite, it was not for bad intention, it was a scientific discovery. But immediately after that, during Second World War, for political reason, somebody misused it to make a atom bomb and drop in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan which was not expected, was very bad application of, uh, bad application of science, okay. So similarly many, many discoveries are there uh, given by the science. Yeah. Without those, modern society cannot uh, sustain. But some people are there of negative mind or uh, criminals, who are, uh, who are misusing those scientific discoveries. But that does not mean that scientists will not keep discovering, okay? So but uh, scientists will discover, everything will have some negative, positive application. And society, as a society, we live in society and we must be, make everyone aware how it can be misused or how it can be used for the benefit of the society. So uh, digital, without digital media, I think uh, we, this modern society cannot sustain, whether we accept or not. Nowadays, we are sitting here in Aizol, thousands of miles away from higher Ministry of Higher Education. But within a notice of one hour, we are able to have a meeting with the minister or the sec cabinet secretary of higher education or any of them official. They will send someone WhatsApp or email, not even email, because email to need, you have to open all, all these things. WhatsApp, we are very convenient. And one hour after, there is a meeting online. Please be that. Is that possible without digital media, all these things? And there is an also instruction. No communication through hard copy, uh, traditional mail, uh, all mail should go as an email attachment or WhatsApp attachment, all these things. And so fast we are now, okay? And think about, Vinit Kumarji has come to a airport, Aizal airport is small, but if he is in Mumbai airport or Delhi airport and somebody come to receive him, Without mobile or WhatsApp, can you connect yourself? Huh? You will be get lost. If I go to Delhi and somebody is waiting in Delhi to receive me, in the so crowd or in Howrah railway station, I drop from the train. And so much of crowd in Howrah, Calcutta railway station, you will get lost without a mobile. Okay. So that is the connectivity necessary. So, um, all of us know only thing awareness is important and I think more awareness is important uh, in a school's level. For a people like you, I think least awareness is required, but uh, higher level of data analysis is certainly a, a necessity uh, at our level, your level, data analysis, how to get uh, actual uh, information through data analysis. And for awareness, uh, 
uh, about the misuse of digital media, it is very important in school level. Okay, we have to make the students aware that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, maybe misuse, lot of misuse. For example, nowadays also we receive some mail from somebody, click the link for this, that, or other door. Now we came to know that by clicking the link, we may be losing our personal data. We may be losing our money from the bank. That's why of many uh, misuse are coming. So for that, awareness is certainly very important. Lot of misuse is possible. And uh, so that kind of awareness and analysis is certainly important. So I think uh, from uh, on my part, it will, not, it will be wrong if I may take more time from you because this is not my domain, but still one or two things I have to say, uh, share with you. One thing is that uh, data analysis to derive the right information from that data. This is being used for a long time. Uh, maybe technology was different. All CIDs or uh, secret services, they are using uh, signal, digital signals for a long time to get the information, uh, uh, to share the information among themselves. Without that secret services, not possible. CID or uh, other uh, secret service agents, RAW, or maybe uh, in KGB uh, in Russia, all these things, they cannot survive without uh, digital media. Because they need to share some data, which is, uh, need some information through digital uh, text, which is not understood by the civilians, common people. I will not understand the uh, digital text from raw, but police people will understand what that text mean. Okay, so that is one thing. And for a layman like me, what how I use digital media, I know uh, some of our colleagues, very few. They always blame WhatsApp. I don't like to be in a WhatsApp group because a uh, lot of time is wasted by looking at the WhatsApp. Even people like college, university teachers feel like that. Maybe old generation people, where young generation will never say that. And uh, But even for old generation like us, me, it is useful. I know, I have, anybody offer me that I have a WhatsApp group, I want to put your name. I never say no, put it. Whether I use or not, it is my discretion. I may use it, may not use it. But from the WhatsApp group, certainly I will derive information. You are offering me to include my number in your WhatsApp group, do it. Why you want to include my name, it is, uh, you have some objective. Or your group will have many people. I'll derive information from, uh, from your communication through WhatsApp. I may not put any message, okay, but you will be putting messages there. I will know many things about you, okay, from that. So I want to know about the society, okay. I will know who you are and who are your friends with you in the group. By reading your text messages from the WhatsApp, I can derive information about you. Say, so for example, I have a WhatsApp group. Some people will not... Uh, they're exchanging messages or sharing jokes. I get very important, very good jokes also uh, from the WhatsApp messages. I read that, uh, relax myself. Good was there's jokes they share. So for me to get those jokes, I have to go to uh, search for Google search or something. Where is my time to do that? I'm getting free of service. Okay, without any spending my time. While moving anywhere, I have break, I'll see, oh, this is a nice joke to share. Okay, then many information come. So one example I feel very interesting. In the WhatsApp group, many of the, uh, uh, the uh, friends in the WhatsApp, they'll be quarreling. They'll be giving some, uh, they'll not directly uh, 
say anything about their favorite person or about their favorite politics or about their party like Congress, BJP or other party. They will not directly say anything. But kind of text they put in the WhatsApp from there I learned who is this people? He is supporting, he or she is supporting Congress or BJP. <laughs> I can derive information. From their way of message they exchange from there, okay? And uh, from their sharing of messages, I can derive information. What is his level of intellectual level? Kind of things he put in the message, from there I can derive. What what is your level of intellectual level? I can derive. Okay. So, uh, kind of message you send to me from there, I can understand your intellectual level. Or what is your uh, philosophy about um, uh, NEP or your uh, academic perception? Many things can be uh, derived. So, I have six, seven WhatsApp group. Anybody offer? I think, okay. Maybe my uh, mobile is uh, loaded too much. Maybe I need to research the mobile very frequently because so many apps are there, it consumes a lot of battery. So I need to research the mobile very frequently. But that does not, uh, I manage it. But I get it, I get benefit. Okay. So uh, it's not that I will be sitting all the time in WhatsApp group. Whenever there is a break in any time, after during my work, then let me on it, make any new messages there from minister or somewhere. That's okay, that's much. I don't spend a lot of uh, working hours on WhatsApp. But certainly I use uh, breaks very fruitfully through WhatsApp. One more thing, uh, suppose I like to, I like listening to good music. How to get it? My friends will be sharing some good music through link in the WhatsApp. Okay, that is one thing. Without my such, because we are contemporary, we are the same thing. My age people, or younger people even, they share some good music through WhatsApp. So they must be good when they are sharing. So I got the stuff. Now when to listen? I don't have the, I cannot make it on keep listening setting aside my work hours. No, I don't do that. When I do that? Okay, I have to take care of my health also. So I will spend one hour in a uh, treadmill or I may be spending one hour walking in the evening and morning outside my residence. So I'll put my earphone here in a safe place. I will walk and listen to the music. I don't have to search for music because WhatsApp group links are there. I just click listen the music, my walking is also done, I enjoy the music as well. And while walking, if you do not listen to music or other things, then you feel tired. Oh, I have walked a lot. Then you become very more careful. Oh, three kilometers done. Oh, enough, let me relax. But if you keep listening to music, you may be walking five hours, five kilometers. Time will pass like anything you don't feel tired. So I'm using that also. Like there are good, uh, very good species come, academic, non-academic, politics, whatever maybe. And people often put in the WhatsApp group. When should I listen to them? During this time only, morning or evening, I spend half an hour for my health. So twin one, I got information on you. For walking on the treadmill, what is you required? Just keep in working, you know attention so much is attention is not required. But I give attention to the speech, who is speaking what. Only earphone is required, mobile is required. So uh, that way uh, suddenly uh, it is very convenient for me. I love the smartphone, <laughs> I love the WhatsApp groups, I love the people, my friends who are in the WhatsApp group. They are helping, contributing to my, uh, for, to enrich my uh, information stuff or my knowledge. 
and life is a learning is a lifelong process still i am learning without mobile phone i think i will uh, i will not be able to gather so much of information because as a vice chancellor i will be all the time in office i will be busy with files discussion meeting visitors all these things i don't have time to uh, uh, google search or search machine to find good stuff but my friends are doing through whatsapp group for me okay so uh, digital media text analysis is very important uh, if i uh, i'm not wrong very useful and only thing uh, we should uh, how to uh, we should know how to use it for the benefit personal benefit as well as benefit of the society if you want to measure it is your time your career if you want to measure that you use it you are spoiling only yourself you are spoiling only your time okay so as a teacher our responsibility to make the students aware that you it is your time it is your life it is your career so be careful about that and use smartphone uh, digital media uh, audio or video whatever may be uh, for your benefit only if you want to uh, move forward uh in your career so this much this much i want to share with you um uh, okay uh, uh so uh, certainly i am happy if even if i am wrong you can make me correct no problem and i learn again from there something uh, i'll not be angry with you that you are pointing the fish wrong no i'll be happy that okay uh that my mistake is corrected by a student i'll be happy okay so uh, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, certainly as professor batendu singh has said uh, first meeting uh, in this dean's uh, seminar hall here and yesterday also i had this uh, similar exactly same structure i don't know how it comes uh, it is the uh, dean's uh, seminar hall in humanities and language calls exactly same type of thing same size same thing i am very happy to see that uh, our students are getting very good ambience to discuss among uh, themselves a good platform okay and this much of uh, thing every i think all other schools are also having so uh, thank you very much for this opportunity with this viewers uh, i declare this uh, today workshop is open thank you all join in namaskar thank you sir for giving us a very wonderful speech so to conclude i now invite professor irene nerwatkimi to present the vote of thanks once again good morning everyone on behalf of the organizing committee we would like to thank our honorable vice chancellor Professor Dibaka Chandra Deka <clears throat> and our Dean, Dean of Semis, Professor Bharten Do Singh, our senior <clears throat> professor in the school, Professor Joyti Kumar, and uh, all the other colleagues from the various department of the school who joined this uh, inaugural function for making this program a success, for sparing available time with us here, and for encouraging us uh, the whole through and supporting us throughout. And we would also like to uh, give our sincere thanks to our resource person, uh, Dr. Vinit Kumar. All the way from Lucknow, he came, we already have in the month of May, and now we, uh, long time back, we have in 2022, and we have gained a lot. And we are sure that even this workshop will help us to gain a lot. And then uh, we also want to invite him again and again uh, to our university. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vinit. And last not but the least, we would like to say thank you to the DST Technology Enabling Center who sponsored this workshop. Uh, especially for mass communication department, this is not the first time. We have been gaining a lot from this project. And today, fortunately, we have uh, one of the project coordinator, Dr. Lalming Lianaren Tlai, from the Department of Management. He's here with us. So uh, 
shall we all give a uh, uh, a hands to him please uh, dr miga can you please stand up okay thank you so much the dst Techno technology enabling center mzu and we would also like to say thank you to all the participants from uh, various department uh, and we hope that you all will be attending the two days program. It will be till tomorrow, 5 uh, p.m. So once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, a light refreshment will be provided, and the session will start again soon.